Hello everyone and welcome to The Real Dallas. I'm your host, Danielle Hawthorne. Today we're going to be shining a spotlight on what's happening in the film scene from Hollywood all the way to right here in Dallas. We're going to give you a sneak peek at some of the biggest blockbusters hitting theaters this December, showcase adventures that moviegoers can experience outside of the movie theater, and hit the set for an upcoming movie filming right here in DFW. All that and more on this episode of The Real Dallas. But first, let's dive into what's hitting theaters near you. First up, we have Black Christmas opening December 13th. Universal Pictures and Blumhouse Productions have teamed up again to bring us a jolly new slasher just in time for the holiday season. Sorority sisters from Mu Epsilon Kappa unite this Christmas when a mysterious killer starts wreaking havoc across Hawthorne College campus. Next up, we're talking about the script that had Margot Robbie completely rattled. We're talking Bombshell. Starring Charlize Theron, Nicole Kidman, and John Lithgow, it's the story of the downfall of Fox News media mogul Roger Ailes. Hitting theaters December 20th and already getting award season buzz, it's definitely a must-see movie. A beloved American classic is making its way back to the big screen this holiday season. Starring Emma Watson, Timothy Chalamet, Sir Ronan, Meryl Streep, and directed by Oscar-nominated Greta Gerwig, Little Women is the eighth adaptation of the 1858 novel and is the perfect feel-good film of the season. Scary, dark, and sad. Those are the three words that Daisy Ridley used to describe our next feature. She also called Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker joyful, so what exactly are we in for, you ask? Well, all we can tell you is that the 42-year-old Skywalker saga is finally coming to an end December 20th. At least, that's what we think is happening. I guess we're gonna have to go to theaters to actually find out. Up next, we'll be traveling to Mexico to chat with the stars of the breakout blockbuster sequel to Sony's 2017 hit, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. I'm Danielle Hawthorne, and you're watching The Real Dallas. We'll be right back. Special thanks to Good Life Family Magazine, the go-to online and print publication that tackles the heartwarming, the fun, the frustrating, and the challenging topics that come with being parents of older kids. Welcome back to The Real Dallas. If you're just joining us, I'm your host, Daniel Hawthorne, and we are so excited to have you here with us today. In this episode, we're covering soon-to-be holiday hits, as well as featuring some of the most immersive entertainment moviegoers can experience outside of theaters. That and so much more on the way. But first, we got to meet up with some of the hottest stars in Hollywood. With such great success from their 2017 remake of Jumanji, Sony simply couldn't wait to play the iconic game again. Coming to theaters December 13th is the sequel to the smash hit, Jumanji The Next Level. This time our four players are joined by two new recruits, played by Danny DeVito and Danny Glover. There's more at stake, more adventure, and so many more laughs. We got to press play on Sony's Jumanji The Next Level. Take a look. Yeah, press play. How about the press junket for Jumanji, the next level? This time around, they navigate more than just the jungle. We are here in Cabo San Lucas. Had a chance to sit down with the cast. Where's the jungle? This is a whole new thing. Nobody told us we had to do a whole new thing. We talked to you guys in Hawaii last time. And in this film, the avatars have some new skills. Do either one of you have a skill you did not have two years ago when we chatted in Hawaii? You know what I am now? Yeah. I'm not playing. No, I'm not. I am, I am a quick reader. 
Really? I am a very fast reader. Did you reader. discover that? I, like, how did that happen? I don't know when it happened or how it happened, but in school, I had a problem reading. with reading and, and Just knowing like, how to read. retaining the information. <laughs> it took me a long time. Like, if, he, if you told me to read a book, it took me the longest time to read a book. Now you just... Because of scripts and getting... I can read wow. very fast. Yeah. Ooh. I've got nunchucks. But you personally... Oh, that's your oh. skill too. I just want to talk about those nunchucks. <laughs> <laughs> I do personally also have that skill. I mean, when you have a skill that you have to practice in a movie, it becomes a real skill. Yeah, ah, yeah. You really do have nunchucks. Yeah, I have a pair and and I can use them. Patience. <laughs> With this one, yeah. two years ago, no patience. You got on my nun, <laughs> my last nerve. Yeah. These days it's different. We get a little older. Right. More uh, gratitude for life. <laughs> Good to have him around. Patience. I'm sitting here waiting for, because I've learned, I figured out that heavy <laughs> Oh, oh, this is about me. Oh, okay. Who are you? Oh my God. You're Spencer's grandfather. Are we in Florida? Those two guys love doing impressions of yes. you. Yes. Yeah, they do. They nail it. Yes, they Can nail you it do time. them? I, I don't. I. I don't think. Uh, uh, I don't think there's any way I can. Uh, do Dwayne uh, justice. I don't think there's any way I could possibly do him justice <laughs> unless I put on a smaller shirt and kind of like, yeah. I saw, there's some definition there. What do you mean there's some definition there? There's some definition. Well, I, I saw muscle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did I die and turn into some kind of a small, muscular Boy Scout. There's no way I can do, you know, Kevin either. What energy, you know what I'm saying? It's just go wah, 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 all over the place, you know? And you try to figure out where does it start from? You try to find yeah. some origin yeah. for it. Yeah. I would be trying to find, I'd still be sitting here trying to find some origin for it. Hey, by the way, little shout out to my parents. They live in Dallas and Plano Senior High, class of 88. We just had our 30th reunion last year. Speaking of reunion, this is a great reunion. I hope there's another Jumanji. Jumanji the Next Level in theaters December 13th. Jumanji the Next Level opens in theaters December 13th. Don't go anywhere because there is so much more to experience on this episode of The Real Dallas. There are two types of journeys in life. There are those we choose to take, and those that life takes us on. From moments we'll never forget, to those we must overcome. Join American Airlines and stand up to cancer in our efforts to help make every person diagnosed with cancer a long-term survivor. Visit standuptocancer.org slash American Airlines to learn more. Stand up with us. I am a huge Funko fan, so when they announced they're dropping a new collection for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, I was pumped. These make the perfect stocking stuffer. And with the film coming out December 20th, what better time to start your collection? If you are interested in purchasing your Funkos today, head to therealdallas.com and we'll have everything you need to know. And if you're planning a trip to LA anytime soon, be sure to stop by their new location, Hollywood Funko. You're watching The Real Dallas. Welcome, team. I'll be leading you on an important mission. Below us, there's a pot of whales that needs our help. There's just one problem. We don't know what else is down there. Welcome back to The Real Dallas. Up next, we are exploring entertainment experiences right here in DFW that are easily accessible outside the walls of a movie theater. If Jumanji 2 is your must-see movie this season and family fun is in your agenda, then what better way to take the holidays to the next level than with an escape room? Our friends at The Secret Chambers boast puzzles and fun unmatched in the industry. Check it out. Have you ever gone to the movies and thought, man, I wish I could have an adventure just like them? 
Well, today we are here in Fort Worth at the Secret Chambers Escape Room to do just that. So come on inside and we'll show you how. Chambers is so unique in that it is so much more than just an escape room. Well, thanks. We like to think so. Um, it's important to us that your goal is never to actually escape the room. That opens up a lot of different story possibilities for us. Mm -hmm. So in each of our different themed rooms, you have a specific objective that you're trying to meet, but it's never to escape the room. Talk to me about some of the other adventures that you have. Sure, we have four. So we're in the pirate adventure right now. Uh, we also have the Witch's Tower adventure, which is kind of a fairy tale adventure. Mm -hmm. We have the Mafia adventure, which is a 30s era Texas speakeasy where you're hunting what? for Bonnie and Clyde. And then our fourth and brand new adventure is the Train Heist adventure, which is kind of a Wild West steampunk. Very cool. Now we're trying to showcase how you can go have a movie-like adventure you know, outside the four walls of a theater, right? Yeah. Talk to me about what it is about escape rooms that really embraces that idea of adventure. We love that. We all we love movies. We have uh, filmmakers in our staff, on our crew, and game designers, and people that are interested in narrative, uh, and, and filmic narrative specifically. So we kind of come from that. We come from a story-based idea. So we build a room starting with a story and then build puzzles to suit. Because we really want you to feel like you are playing through a scene in a movie or playing through a scene in a board game even. Like you've been put into a real life board game experience kind of adventure. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've been thrown into Pirates of the Caribbean, like standing here, looking around, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm in a movie! <laughs> this is so much fun! That's awesome. That's our goal. That's what we want everybody to feel like all the time. That we want that I'm in a movie feeling mm -hmm. in all of our adventures. And so that's why we kind of come from uh, story first and mm -hmm. then and we obviously we want to make sure that the room looks and feels immersive so we put a lot of uh, thought into designing the rooms in a way that they feel like uh, more than just look like that they feel like you're on an adventure yeah. who who are these rooms for talk to me about families is it for date night I mean who can come experience this it's all of the above so we design rooms for players like ourselves, which means they're mostly designed with adult players in mind. Mm -hmm. um, but we do also go out of our way to make sure that the rooms are family friendly and kid friendly. Okay. So we have family groups all of the time. We have church groups and, and youth groups. Uh, we have a lot of corporate groups that will come in and play this for a team building experience for their, uh, for their staff. And so really anybody who's interested in puzzles, who's interested in problem solving, uh, who wants to feel like they're inside a movie or feel like they're inside a game, it's a great it's a great fit for any group like that. There is a room I saw that is coming soon here that is literally straight out of a Jumanji-esque jungle adventure. Mm -hmm. that, it's our jungle adventure. Tell me about it. <laughs> um, so, so the jungle adventure, with the, I'll tell you the thing that I think is really fun about it. Uh, and if you take a look at our poster, you'll see this is featured on the poster for the room as well. We actually have an, uh, a real airplane, a crashed airplane. Everybody was fine. The airplane crashed, <laughs> crashed into the lake. Um, but we were able to salvage that airplane. So we have a full-sized, like, two-seater airplane uh, in the room that we built the walls around that will be a big feature of the jungle adventure. I can't tell you too many details about what the narrative will be for that. Well, yeah, you can't. Yet. We can't be telling you the secrets no, right now. No spoilers. We are the secret chambers. But, um, but yeah, it's going to be a very cool and, again, very immersive room with a lot of really cool new features that you've never seen before. To have your very own movie adventure, you can head to thesecretchambers.com to grab your tickets today. I've got some uh, mysteries and puzzles to solve right here on this pirate ship. So you've been watching The Real Dallas. We'll be back. You got it. You got to come help I'm me. I'm with you. I don't want to. I don't even know where to go next. Over here. <laughs> Another big thanks to Matt over at the Secret Chambers. We had the best time, and I will be back for that pirate adventure. Up next, we're taking a deep dive into the world of virtual reality. This is a digital experience you definitely don't want to miss. Stay tuned. Bring it. Time out, guys. I'm late.
late to dinner. My mom's gonna kill me. Catch you guys later. Mom wants us home. Okay. Bye, guys. You guys need a ride? Sure. Oh, yeah. All right. How about some one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, I gotta go eat, man. Sorry, I'll, I'll see you later. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Hello again, you're watching The Real Dallas. I know that we narrowly escaped the pirate room at the secret chambers, but we just couldn't stop there. We went looking for a global adventure as big as the jungle itself, and we found it. From petting dinosaurs to exploring the bottom of the ocean, Dreamscape is a virtual reality experience unlike any other. Take a look. I'm here in Dreamscape Immersive Studio at North Park Mall here in Dallas, and I'm so excited because Dreamscape is a location-based VR studio that actually brings the movies to life for us. It uses their proprietary body scanning technology to actually pull you into the action of the movie. Today, we're gonna to be checking out The Curse of the Lost Pearl. I've been told there's lots of action, adventure, a little bit of mystery. I've gathered a few of my friends here today, and we're gonna go in and check it out. Come on. You can go ahead and sit down in those stations for me. So right here on your left shoulder is your headset. Right behind you is your backpack. Right here next to your knees are your hand trackers and right below you are your foot trackers. Remember, this is an adventure. We are all suited up now and ready to go. So I will see you after the curse of the lost pearl. I was expecting to kind of just stand there and it was different, you know, you got to walk around and interact and I held a torch. Yeah, and it was a hot torch. Hot torch. Hot torch. Yeah. Unlike a lot of other VR experiences, it like breaks you up into groups as well and it makes you kind of explore and kind of meet each other and it's kind of a, a winding road in terms yeah, of... Yeah, it's a very interactive escape room where you weren't just in a room. It felt like you were traveling through different things and it was really cool. Really cool. It did remind me of like being in Temple of Doom. I don't even know how to explain it. Still mentally processing. Yes, because it was so engulfing. I mean, you really felt like you were going through a temple and even just with, we have like fire sticks that you actually feel heat off of. So it was kind of getting a little hard to decipher reality from yeah. the VR experience. Yeah, your brain kind of like makes you feel like you're high up or makes you feel like your your sensory like and it's just crazy yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like sensory overload yes. yeah yeah i think this kind of takes the idea of immersive video games and and the experience of cinema and kind of blends them together and i think this is a great experience for anyone who loves going to the movies just because you're actually putting yourself in it and personally, I would love to see them do like an aliens style one where you're in space. That would be pretty cool. No, 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 yes. I don't want that. <laughs> but this is definitely something I think for anybody, especially a moviegoer, because you're really putting yourself inside of this type of virtual reality. I had so much fun going through the Curse of the Lost Pearl with all of my friends. Be sure to grab your friends and family and head to Dreamscape in North Park Mall this holiday season. I'm Danielle Hawthorne, and you're watching The Real Dallas. We'll be right back. 
special thanks to Good Life Family Magazine, the go-to online and print publication that tackles the heartwarming, the fun, the frustrating, and the challenging topics that come with being parents of older kids. I am a huge Funko fan, so when they announced they're dropping a new collection for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, I was pumped. These make the perfect stocking stuffer. And with the film coming out December 20th, what better time to start your collection? If you are interested in purchasing your Funkos today, head to therealdallas.com and we'll have everything you need to know. And if you're planning a trip to LA anytime soon, be sure to stop by their new location, Hollywood Funko. You're watching The Real Dallas. Welcome back and thank you again for joining us on The Real Dallas. To end this month's episode, we're catching up with Dallas-based director Jonathan Brownlee. But first, we're heading out to set of 12 Mighty Orphans shooting here in DFW. been filming here on and off for 20 years so it's it's sort of where I got my my the groundwork laid for my career and, and sort of learned the, the ropes of everything from uh, working on documentaries to feature films to uh, a few commercials here and there you know a lot of people when you talk to them about film in Dallas they think commercial but there's so much more going on here we have such a rich uh, film community yeah. for someone who is interested in either supporting the arts or supporting film here in Dallas what would you say to them how can they support it get involved you know I think the most important factor in in continuing to develop our industry here in Texas and and Dallas as well is is to continue to support these projects. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit more about 12 Mighty Orphans because that's a really powerful story. Yeah, 12 Mighty Orphans uh, was based on a book also called 12 Mighty Orphans that uh, Jim Dent wrote about 10 years ago that uh, chronicled uh, sort of the rise of, of Rusty Russell, Coach Rusty Russell, who uh, came up to the Masonic Orphanage uh, back in 1928, I think, and basically started the football program and helped kick off, kick off the academics for the, uh, the orphanage and actually turned it into a real high school and a very competitive sports program as well. He and his wife, Juanita, uh, really took the orphanage under their wing and developed a, a wonderful curriculum for the kids. And uh, they had a powerhouse football team from the mid-30s till about the early 40s. And so our particular years, 1938, were the, a group of 12 uh, come in and sort of captures the essence of his, his entire career. Um, and he basically takes these kids, or the kids go on to state. It's just a great story to tell, and it's it's something I'm I'm so honored and, and feel very proud to be a part of, and you know to represent Fort Worth and what the Masonic home meant to those to all the kids that went there. We've got people in the movie who went to the home. I've really, met, I met three. Oh my gosh, it's yeah, wow. pretty cool. We are here at Idea Man Studios talking to DFW's very own director Jonathan Brownlee. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Jonathan, you are extremely embedded in the film community here in Dallas. That is not, true. Yeah, not only are you the president and CEO of the Dallas Film Society, you're a director. I do those things, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's true. Although sometimes I'm not sure which part of my brain is, is where half the time. But yeah, no, I mean, the, uh, the Dallas Film Society um, was when I first moved here from Canada was was so great to me. You know, we had a couple of films in the festival and 
uh, when the opportunity came to to run the organization, I you know growing up in Toronto, I really knew the value of having a great festival here, not only to bring films in, but also to support other filmmakers here. And as a filmmaker, one of the things that's wonderful is to be able to support other filmmakers. Mm -hmm. So that's part of my brain. And the other part of my brain, obviously, is you know writing and directing films. And uh, we're lucky that our industry is really growing here in Dallas. Talking about shooting here, I mean, we've got tons of talent here in the city. A lot of people don't think of Dallas as a hub right. for all these incredible filmmakers, you know, yeah. both in front of the camera and behind it. But you work with a team here, right? Yeah, I mean, the majority of people that we work with, um, you know, on our production team live here, have lived here for years, are Dallas natives, and more people are moving back, which is great. Um, we still do uh, go to LA and New York, obviously for a lot of our big name talent that comes mm -hmm. in, um, just kind of the nature of, of the world. Although more of those actors are not living in Los Angeles. Yeah, know. they're kind of like branching out, living in other areas of the yeah, country. Yeah, because they can, right? So yep. it's so that's that's really cool. And and the idea obviously is to build more jobs. Yeah. You know, more production <laughs> jobs, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. More production jobs. You know, for people here here in Dallas, uh, mm -hmm. we want people to stay here. Yeah. We, don't, we don't want them to have to go to LA or New York or Atlanta or New Mexico or Toronto or Vancouver to make a right. living. I hope that one of the things that I can be a part of is is to help Dallas become, you know, the third coast, if you will. Yeah. Um, help Texas become more of a hub for for the entertainment industry and and shooting stuff here, and that people understand this is a great industry. Um, there's all types of work in our industry. It's not just the big feature films. It's also down to the you know the Facebook video kind of thing, so it's pretty cool. 2020, mm. what are we kicking the year off with? So from a, a Dallas Film perspective and Dallas International Film Festival, so we have several events coming up. Uh, first of all, if you have a film and you'd like to submit a film, you can go to Film Freeway because submissions are open for the Dallas International Film Festival 2020. Yes! Uh, and that's April 16th through the 23rd is when the actual festival is. Other things we're doing with Dallas Film Society, the Veterans Institute for Film and Media. Um, which, which is an incredible program. Thank you. Quickly. Yeah. If quickly. you haven't heard of it, it's incredible. The Veterans, VIFM, the Veterans Institute for Film and Media, mm -hmm. is a, a, a training program fully free to former military um, to train in jobs in film and television production and, and in digital media. Um, and so we're, that's how we're helping to build our crew base, as well as doing something tangible, you know, for our, our former military, which we should. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun stuff coming up. Yeah. So head to filmfreeway.com if you've got a film, if you want to learn more about VIFM. VIFM.us. And then for Dallas Film, it's just dallasfilm.org. Dallasfilm.org and torfoot.com if you want to check out stuff that we're doing. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you. All right, anytime. We hope you enjoyed this episode of The Real Dallas. For more behind the scenes interviews and movie news, head to therealdallas.com and be sure to follow us on social. Thank you again for joining us today. I'm your host, Danielle Hawthorne. Happy holidays to you all. And that is a wrap on this episode of The Real Dallas. Mm -hmm.